insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, expecting shit to change. That is crazy. Hey guys, so um, does anyone remember, um, what was it called again? Oh yeah, TanaCon. <laughs> TanaCon was, in a nutshell, an awful event organised by a not very nice person. However, in less than a month, an even worse event has been organised by an even worse human being. Only on YouTube could this happen, seriously. In the last week, FoosyTube has returned from the YouTube graveyard. He's been gone from the platform for about a year now, he kind of went underground for a while. However, now he's back to restart his YouTube career. And I think I speak for everyone when I say that nobody really cared at all. FoosyTube was quite a prominent YouTuber back in 2016. He was a prank channel. He did fake pranks, fake social experiments, and he got under a lot of fire for them. His social experiments in particular caused quite a lot of controversy. He usually did them on very dark or serious topics. Off the top of my head, suicide, rape, homelessness and bullying were some of the topics of his social experiments. In a nutshell, FoosyTube was only using these serious topics to try and get more views. For example, it's not really good to hate on a video that's serious, and as well as that, by saying, oh yeah, share this around to promote a positive message, he'd get more views. Despite this being obvious though, FoosyTube always insisted that he did these pranks and social experiments to entertain people, enlighten people, and promote a positive message, shall we say. The best example I can think of is FoosyTube's suicide experiment, which in a nutshell was him and a friend pretending they were going to throw themselves off a bridge and a paid actor telling them not to do so. I told you, it's, life is hard, I can't handle it, I'm gonna jump. You cannot jump off these. The suicide experiment. If you have a friend or family member who's going through suicide, are you gonna help them in the time of need? Do you even realize that they're going through something? Maybe you had the opportunity to talk to them and see how they were doing, but you chose not to. Here's how to prevent that in the future. Well, forgive me for sounding blunt, but that makes no sense at all. His first point is, um, are you going to help a friend or family member that's going through suicide? Yes, obviously. <laughs> His other point is, do you even realise they're going through something? Well, with all due respect, if my friend is standing on the edge of a bridge saying he's going to throw himself off, I think it's quite obvious he's going through something, don't you think? Anyway, FoosyTube came under a lot of fire for these social experiments and pranks. A lot of people started making videos on him, the commentary community started talking about him, and usually in this situation, the YouTube will either ignore all the videos made about him or respond. But FoosyTube did something very different that basically killed any integrity he had left. FoosyTube started claiming the videos made about him, which basically means any money that video makes goes to FoosyTube instead of the person that made the video. A claim can last for up to a month, and during that month, basically all the money that that video would make would go into a big pot. And then one of two things can happen. First off, the person that claimed the video can retract it, and then all the video money goes back to the original creator, or the person that claimed the video cannot retract it and stand by it, and then all the video money goes to them. So claiming someone's video anyway is a bit of a scummy move, but what FoosyTube would do was he would wait the entire month. He would wait right up until the point where the claim was about to expire, and then he would claim the money. He would basically wait until an entire month's worth of someone's revenue built up, and then he would take it, which is just even worse. And obviously this did nothing to help FoosyTube's already quite desperate situation, and he essentially got run off YouTube. He disappeared for about a year, and nobody really heard of him until now. FoosyTube's epic return to the internet started off with a music video, a painfully average music video. Yeah. yeah. Hey Brian, <laughs> Rice ain't got no spirit, got no deeper layer. Oh yeah, and it's a diss track, a, a diss track on rice gum. <laughs> What's that? Rice gum's a dick? Goodness me, aren't you incredible? I'd have never guessed. What's more interesting about this music video, though, is the, uh, the vision board he's got posted in this video's description. According to this, this song will be number one song on the Billboard Hot 100. It will get 350 million views in under three months. It will be a club banger, 
and it'll be on the radio in the entire world at least once a day. It's just a diss track. It's a generic hip-hop diss track on a shitty YouTuber. I, I don't... I can't understand it. Once his diss track had graced the internet, Tube started talking about his next... Next? That's, that's not a word. His next big endeavour, which was a meet and greet, a convention, which he was calling Hate Dies, Love Arrives, and it was set to be on July the 15th. Tube's big selling point for this convention was that Drake was going to be there. The man himself, the absolute legend, the um, ninjas, Ninja's good Fortnite friend. <laughs> and in the days leading up to this convention, we basically saw Tube stalk Drake. I mean, it's just worrying at this point. Drake, I heard you're in LA this weekend. You just dropped the summer's anthem. The king is back. Anyways, Drake, I'm trying to find you because I want to invite you to my July 15th show tomorrow, free at the Greek Theater. Energy, got a lot of energy. Got a lot of people trying to jam me in this energy, trying to take away from an era. Get back in the car. Whoa. Get back in the car. Okay, sorry. Yo, Drake. I literally look like a crazy person right now because I'm outside of the place that you're at. Don't ask me how I found it, bruh. What's even worse about what I just showed you, all this footage, this damning evidence that 100% proves that Fousey is stalking Drake, he posted it himself on his own YouTube channel. It wasn't someone else. He looked at this footage and went, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. I think I'll put that on my YouTube channel. Hey, Drake, OVO! Yo, I'm trying to look like you, dog. Is it working? Nah, I'm not, but some girls do call me Champagne Poppy. Some girls do call me Habibi. I got a girlfriend, though, so it don't matter. Sorry, ladies. What in the name of sanity are you fucking talking about, man? It's probably worth mentioning at this point that Tube has a bit of a history with mental health. He's got bipolar disorder. He's admitted that himself. But what you also have to consider is that for a long time now, Fousey has thought of himself as some sort of visionary genius or something like that. And then if you take the fact that he was run off YouTube for over a year for basically stealing people's revenue, if you put those three points together, I think you get quite a clear picture of what his mental health must be like right now. Basically, the point I'm trying to get at, in my opinion, I think this man is on the verge of a mental breakdown. Honestly, that's not a joke or a meme. I think he's genuinely close to just losing it completely. Anyway, moving on, July the 15th rolled around, Fousey's event started up, and sure enough, not many people came, and just to top that off, Drake wasn't there. What's that? No Drake at a tiny event organised by a just bizarre YouTuber. No Drake? Can you imagine? Goodness me! What? Ah, ah. The event was going okay. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't a train wreck yet, shall we say, but it was going okay up until someone called in a bomb threat. You heard that correctly, folks. First on Scarce News, someone called in a bomb threat on Fousey's event. Police say that this phony bomb threat, but when someone called in a bomb threat, police say the caller claimed there was a device at the theater. To the exits, calmly, and we'll continue this in a few moments. For right now, thank you for your cooperation. We want you to just stay calm. We want you to stay right where you are and follow the directions that's given to you at this time. Bro, what is going on here? They just said, what What did they say? They're not wearing a power outage or what? Come on, bro, look at this. All the lights are on, look at this. As it stands, there are two theories for why the bomb threat was called in. The first and more realistic one is that someone just thought it'd be funny, it was a prank, and the event got shut down. The second reason, and this is just speculation, I should say, the second reason is that Fousey might have looked at his own event, realised it was going horrifically, and called it himself. And again, this is just speculation. There is no proof of that, but a couple of people have said it, and I thought I'd mention it in the video. Now, at this point, the event has flopped. Barely anyone turned up, there was no Drake, and the police shut it down because there was a bomb threat. Surely at this point, even Fousey would see, oh yeah, this hasn't gone great, maybe time to call it a day. No. This is only the beginning. This is where the train wreck really happens. Or something. So the Greek had to uh, essentially be evacuated. We watched a bunch of uh, frustrated people come out here and leaving Griffith Park. But look at this. The YouTuber himself is actually on top of a car uh. and he's been talking to a bunch of his fans down here. Instead of calling it a day, Fousey decided it would be a good idea to approach an Uber driver, pay him $50,000 and then stand on his car for a couple of hours, giving a monologue to whoever was left in the vicinity. That's just crazy. I felt like I was letting God down! That's Kiki, true. do you love me? 
This monologue in itself was a complete train wreck. There were certain points where he was talking about depression, then he was promoting his Twitter, then he was talking about his diss track, and then he had a bit of a moment with Keemstar. Sit down and understand what's being said. You don't read a Nas lyric once. You don't read a Jake Paul lyric once. NANI? And finally, after all this, the police eventually showed up again and shut down the convention for good. And that really is the end of Hate Dies, Love Arrives. <laughs> but, but, but what's that I hear you say? Oh, Muke, what was, what was the point of all this? Why did he organise this event in the first place? Is there a reason for it or was it just a train wreck from the start? Well, <laughs> apparently, FouseyTube organised all this stuff just to promote a song. You couldn't make this shit up if you tried. The aftermath of this event only further proves that FujiTube is on the verge of a mental breakdown. For a start, he's convinced that the event was a huge success. And in the past couple of days, he's uploaded two videos, one on PewDiePie and one that's apparently a message to XXXTentacion, who, just in case you don't know, died a couple months ago. The PewDiePie video is supposed to be a response to PewDiePie's video on the event, but it's really not. There's a couple clips of PewDiePie's video, and then the rest of it is just sad royalty-free music and some inspirational quotes playing over segments of his convention. So as far as I can see, he's just stuck PewDiePie's name in the title and the thumbnail so we can get some more views and some more attention his way. I haven't watched the XXX Tentacion one because, well, it's 24 minutes long, but I'd be willing to bet that this is the same thing again. In conclusion, FouseyTube is mental. He hasn't ever been a particularly great person anyway. He started doing fake pranks and questionable social experiments, but now I think he's genuinely tipped over the edge and I think he genuinely needs help. This is the prime example of someone who should never be famous, who should never have fame, but has it anyway. And what makes this worse is that he has fans that are just as crazy as him egging him on and promoting this. No, okay? No, this isn't good. Please, Fousey, please stop. For everyone's sake. Hey guys, you ever heard the story of um, Humpty Dumpty? Um, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, then Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, and then the fall seriously messed with Humpty Dumpty's head, and so he decided it would be a good idea to organise a live convention in five days. Quality nursery rhyme. Anyway, that's all from me. That's all I've got to say on the matter. I hope we can put this to bed now and just leave it, but apparently there's already talk that Fousey is organising a second event. So I watch with great interest and hope that YouTube burns down before this happens. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, maybe consider liking, subscribing, and you can check out my social medias in the description so you never miss an update from. Any support you can throw my way is massively appreciated. It does help my teeny tiny little YouTube channel grow a bit, and yeah. Thanks in advance for anything you can do. Anyway, that'll do it. So from me and this six foot tall Rastafarian banana, um, farewell and see you in the next video. Why do I actually own you? You are so pointless.